Are you serious? Are you serious? The United States and the Russians are sitting down and they're discussing the possibilities and the future of Syria. Not because they're both on the same team here. They're actually on the opposite side of this. But they are talking. Matter of fact, I have some information come to me right now, Stephen of Oklahoma, and let me, from World News, let me get to it, and yes, the red cups are back, if you want to get one, I don't even have it, if you go to my website, I don't even have a red cup button, okay, it's silver, just click on the silver one, and uh, you will get the red one, okay, go ahead, in Jesus' name, thank you, limited supply though, so hurry, now listen to this, Russia and the United States are in the Geneva talks over the future of Syria. Let me say that again. What? United States and Russia are in Geneva talking about the future of Syria. Biblical proportions. The Middle East is up for grabs. People don't realize it because we're worried about your, your local team, your NFL team. You're worried about, will Notre Dame beat Alabama in the national championship in college football? You're worried about, uh, you know, what happened to Jersey Shore. You're still trying to figure out who's going to win Survivor. You don't know what's going on with American Idol. You're scared. You're afraid. You're not worried. You're worried about the Mayan calendar apocalypse you need to be more concerned about the actual bible prophecy going on right now in the middle east it is the time it is the it is the time frame we're in it's absolutely bringing us to the brink of the beast now russian and american diplomats have met in geneva to discuss the future of syria as they both nations send UN envoys. Okay? Lakdar Bramai, according to the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lorov, who insisted that the meeting did not imply that Moscow has softened in its support for the Syrian leader, President Bashar Assad. In other words, we're not saying we're, that we've dropped the guy. We're not saying... We've quit supporting him. We're just saying we should sit down and talk to the Americans because it's evident something's going to happen. So, Laroff said that the brainstorming session involving the United States senior officials from Washington and Moscow had been agreed last week when Laroff and the United States Secretary of State Hillary Rodden Clinton we're meeting together in Dublin. Nobody told us they were in Ireland. I didn't know. I knew, I, I knew Hillary was in Ireland, but I didn't know she was there meeting with the Russians about Syria. Oh, that's different information. Because we have been finding out that this chemical weapons that came from Saddam Hussein to Syria that Assad is now flexing his muscles and says he'll use. But now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not on the side of Assad. And I'm not on the side of the Muslim Brotherhood that's going to take his place. What I see, it's going to go from bad to worse. Because when the Muslim Brotherhood gets in play, they will completely make the circle surrounding Israel with Muslim Brotherhood-led nations. Tunisia, Egypt, Libya. Yemen, and now Syria. So the fall of Assad, though he is a butcher and a murderer and has put 40,000 of his own people bloodily to death and another 40,000 missing and 140,000 that have fleed the country, he's turned the city of Damascus no longer a city but a ruinous heap as the Bible says in Isaiah 17 verse 1. And in Jeremiah 49, 23 through 27, the exact collapse of Damascus in, in secession has taken place and is taking place. So the Russians and Larov stressed that the agreement to meet with the deeply divisive issue did not amount to Russians' acknowledgement 
that Assad's fall is inevitable. Okay. We're not holding these talks about Assad's fate. And all attempts to present the situation in any other way would be unscrupulous. Even for diplomats from those countries which are well known for their intention to distort the facts in their favor. I think he was smacking the United States media. And if that's what he was doing, I have to say amen to the Russian counterpart. Is the United States media is just about as sick as it can get when it comes to giving us the truth. But he did go on to say, the talks took place against a backdrop of intense fighting with loyalist forces attempting to push back the rebels from around the capital, Damascus, and have reported opposition of capture of a government regimental command center in the city of Apado, Providence, which relied heavily on fighters uh, from the Jabat al-Nusara, which are a jihadist group, with Al-Qaeda ties has been excluded from the Western Arabic-backed opposition coalition. In other words, the rebels, which are Muslim Brotherhood, have sided with Al-Qaeda and the Jabhat al-Nusra, which are radical Islamic groups themselves. So you've got three radical Islamic groups teaming up with the Syrian fighters to overtake Assad's government. I told you, with President of Assad, it's bad. But we're going from bad to worse. And guess who is supplying the weapons to the Muslim Brotherhood to over overtake Assad? You got it. NATO, led by President Barack Obama and the United States, by way of Libya. And I think maybe, just maybe, that's why United Nations Ambassador Christopher Stevens is six feet underground, along with three other brave diplomats, including two ex-Navy SEALs. Matter of fact, on the Today Show, I got, a, I got an email from Jack in Pennsylvania that on the Today Show, Matt Lauer was interviewing one of the widows of the ex-Navy SEALs that died in Libya. And she said that... When asked about what her husband was like, she said he was a man that loved Jesus Christ and his country and his family. And he died for freedom. But when, but when NBC then later aired the interview, they removed the comment where she said he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they don't want to offend some of the Muslim people and the Buddhists and some of the other atheists that are in this country. Folks, what about offending the Christians in this country? How many times do we got to be offended? How many times do we got to be lied to? How many times do we got to listen to the media distort the facts? Are we on the brink of the beast? Really, seriously. Are we on the edge of eternity is the apocalyptic hour upon us, not the Mayan calendar, but Bible prophecy. Now listen to this. Meanwhile, despite U.S. and allied warnings, the regime appears to be taking uh, steps toward the use of chemical weapons, according to a senior Israeli official, said to believe that there is no immediate chemical threat from Syria. On these matters, we have to prepare to protect ourselves by ourselves, says the Vice Prime Minister of Israel on the radio. At this time, we see no sign that the weaponry is being pointed at us. But Israel is taking decisive steps to protect themselves if they have to by themselves. You know what they're saying? If America don't step up and take care of us or help us, we'll take care of it ourselves, folks. The Middle East is a time bomb getting ready to blow. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? Because, folks, we're living in the apocalyptic hour, and Christ will soon to return. Coming after his bride, are you saved? Or have you repented of your sins? Have you been born again? Jesus is the way.